By contrast, Ukraine's territorial brigades often, though not always, perform secondary missions, garrisoning cities and towns and patrolling rear areas. A dozen or more territorial brigades already were forming when the Russians attacked in February, and they were doing so with whatever small arms and trucks they could scrounge. The result is a dizzying array of improvised armor, rocket launchers and air defense systems, each the military equivalent of Frankenstein's monster. Some obviously work just fine. Some probably don't. All are indicative of Ukrainian ingenuity, but they also underscore vexing shortages in the Ukrainian arsenal, shortages that Ukraine's foreign allies are unwilling or unable to fill as Russia's wider war on Ukraine grinds into its tenth month. The improvised, Soviet-style BMP infantry fighting vehicle, combining the turret of a BMD airborne IFV with the tracked hull of a PRP-3 quarters artillery observation vehicle, lies on the higher end of the spectrum of Ukrainian Franken vehicles, there's no reason this hybrid shouldn't function just as well as a purpose-built BMP does. On the lower end, however, are some truly cringeworthy vehicles, many of them belonging to second-line Ukrainian formations, it's fair to be skeptical of a pickup truck mounting PM-1910 Maxim machine guns with anti-aircraft sights, the PM-1910 as a 110-year-old weapon. If you spot a Ukrainian brigade packing upward-firing Maxim guns, it's because that brigade got really, really desperate for anti-aircraft firepower. There's a long, global tradition of Frankenstein armored vehicles. Militias in Syria and Iraq, with their tractor tanks and steel-encased trucks might be the modern champions of do-it-yourself armor, but the Ukrainians offer stiff competition. DIY armor began cropping up in large numbers in Ukraine over summer, as the Ukrainian army scrambled to add brigades in order to stiffen the front line and add weight to the counter-offensives commanders were planning for the fall. The active Ukrainian army in general formed new brigades only as fast as it could acquire second-hand armored vehicles by way of donations from Ukraine's NATO allies, or by capturing vehicles from the Russians. That made sense. Ukraine's active units handle the most intensive fighting. Without armor and fire support, they're worse than useless, they're a waste of precious manpower. A slightly odd-looking Ukrainian infantry fighting vehicle churning through the cold mud that's typical of Ukraine's early winters, tells a profound story. The Ukrainian military and its supporting industry for months have been taking bits and pieces of wrecked armored vehicles and combining them with museum-quality antique weapons and even pickup trucks. From day one of the war, the territorials were hungry for heavier weaponry, so it should come as no surprise that they were responsible for many of the weirder DIY vehicles. A lot of the earlier Franken vehicles were rocket launchers. In a bid to even the Russians' 2 to 1 advantage in artillery and launchers, the Ukrainians salvaged rocket pods from wrecked. Purpose built BM 21 ground launchers and even pulled out of storage launchers designed to hang under the wings of attack helicopters and warplanes. Bolt a pod to a trailer, pickup or flatbed truck, and voila, instant rocket launcher. It's likely to be wildly inaccurate, of course. But inaccurate fire support is better than no fire support, right? The territorials soon found a partial solution to the accuracy problem inherent in Bolt on rocket launchers. They began installing 100mm MT-12 anti-tank guns on MTLB armored tractors. The Cold War vintage MT-12 is a towed gun that can take minutes to unhitch, set up, aim and fire. The MTLB normally lacks heavy weaponry, relegating it to support roles, 